Hello, I am Evan Johnson. My team members are Thomas Warwick, Ryan Garcia Rodriguez, and Jacob Giro. And our senior design project was the design, building, and construction of a solar-powered vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This aircraft is being designed to be entered in NASA's Midwest Regional UAS competition. Our aircraft has a deployable payload that can be switched out with many different options based on the needs of the mission. We have about 4,000 grams of available payload allowing a high adaptability to different missions. Due to the solar-powered nature of our aircraft, it will be able to operate in constrained environments without traditional infrastructure, even though usage times may be longer. In the previous semester, we learned the fundamentals of flying a drone, as well as the importance of rapid prototyping. Going into the project, we had a cursory understanding of the construction techniques and skill required to build and fly an unmanned aerial vehicle. However, when designing an experimental platform, such as the one we set out to build, this would not be enough. The initial design was based on Rand D. St. Clair's VTOL Explorer which itself was a kit bash of Flight Test Explorer. The plane we first built far exceeded the design weight of both the Explorer at 1,315 grams and the VTOL Explorer at 1,574 grams at a whopping 3,379 grams. This weight included larger motors, a larger battery, and the Pixhawk 4 flight controller with the associated components necessary for autopilot functionality. And although we did have some successes, as you can see in this clip, we had many failures, and after a period of time where we were crashing and rebuilding the entire aircraft at least once a week, we decided to reach out to Peter Schriepel, a professional RC aircraft builder. He informed us that the weight we were planning to add to the aircraft would most likely exceed the designed maximum gross weight of the Explorer, and recommended we look toward designing a new, high aspect ratio aircraft. We knew we would need to build another aircraft to accommodate the number of solar panels necessary to charge the battery. We first looked at using a flying wing design since it would provide a large wing area with a short enough wingspan to make transportation easier. After receiving a reply from Peter Schriepel, we changed our plans to building a high aspect ratio aircraft. To keep the drag ratio low, we decided to look at RC gliders for design parameters. The AG25 airfoil seemed to be a popular choice among the gliders in our estimated size range. We chose the NACA 9 airfoil for both the horizontal and vertical stabilizers since it was recommended by many RC builders. Once the aircraft was modeled in XFLR5, we simulated its performance and stability data to determine the optimal position for the empennage as well as the center of gravity. The design of the wing spars was accomplished using Fusion 360, a 3D parametric modeling software that allows for scaling our design later if we need to increase the surface area. The laser takes any image file and scales it as well as converts it into a vector graphic before generating G-code. That allows it to control the speed and power of the laser, which has to do with the depth of cut and the speed at which the laser cuts. The laser is accurate to within a tenth of a millimeter, and it allowed us to cut out all of our required components in just a few hours. To construct the wing sections, we built a jig using clamps to guarantee that all three sections would be identical in spacing distance as well as straight and not any twisted in any way, shape, or form. This is important because any wing twist would mess up with the aerodynamics of our airframe, leading to instability at low speed. We then simply lined up all the spars, glued everything in place, and could build a new wing in a day in the event of a crash, greatly reducing the time it takes to build one of these aircraft traditionally. The program used for controlling the aircraft is Q Ground Control. Q Ground Control provides full flight control and vehicle setup for the Pixhawk 4 or Ardu Pilot power vehicles. It provides a simple interface to control routing and navigation of many different kinds of airframes. It also allows us to edit specific sensors and parameters to fine tune our aircraft. For our newest aircraft, we had to create our own custom airframe and use Q Ground Control as a bridge for controlling these parameters. We're able to do everything from inverting PWM signals to changing how sensitive our manual controller behaves. Using this software allowed us to remove most of the human error when flying, so that a lot of crashes can be avoided. As you can see, this is why we decided to invest time into learning how to fly from Q Ground Control rather than relying on someone flying manually. The FPV camera is a standalone camera that does not interact with Q Ground Control or the Pixhawk. It has its own screen that the camera sends its video feed to, 
and can be powered by either the power distribution board or a separate battery. The signal is strong up to about half a mile and slowly decays up to three quarters of a mile. Over the course of the semester, solar panels were constructed to be fitted atop the wings of the aircraft. However, because of the limited amount of space on the aircraft, as well as the cost of the solar cells being used, a boost converter was placed in parallel with the panels to amplify the output voltage. The first test was to test how much voltage was produced by the panels in full sunlight, as full sunlight is the condition required to produce the maximum amount of voltage. Testing found that in these conditions, the output was between 0.5 and 0.6 volts. At the maximum power point, each solar panel will produce approximately 5 watts each. A total of about 200 watts was the total power needed to prevent overcharging. To maintain correct operating voltage, we are using the Genesun Solar Charge Controller. The charge controller needs 10 volts to operate, but can then completely charge our batteries to full capacity. We believe that cruise throttle or a craft will be consuming about 150 watts and about 600 watts during the vertical takeoff. This means that if cruise times are long enough, we would be able to fly as long as the sun is able to charge the solar panels. The solar charge controller is important because it prevents overcharging and also prevents damaging the battery cells, as well as being the only supply we have to maintain the correct voltage and current requirements for safely charging our LiPo battery. Currently, our aircraft skeleton has been assembled and our custom program has been uploaded and tested successfully. We also have all of the motors attached and wired. There still needs to be some other tests run to make sure that the aircraft is safe. For instance, a hover test and a transition test on the ground to ensure the aircraft will only complete its transition after it is above its stall speed. In the future, we plan on wrapping the wings and attaching the solar panels to them. We also need to experiment with the airspeed sensor so that we can get an accurate reading. Then we will begin our flight test for the competition in August.